I did this painting on a 8x10 inch canvas board, which I gessoed black. And you can see here, I just sketched out with a color pencil the main shape of the petals. I wasn't going for a photorealistic look. I'm just using this photograph as reference to get everything in the right place. And this was a really beautiful photograph. I've been wanting to paint it for quite some time. I do have permission to paint it. There's a group I'm on and there's photographers there that share their photography for use as reference photographs for free for artists. And we just give the photographers credit whenever we post the work or whenever we use it for any work. So I've just got the general shape of the petals. Uh, you can see it's not an exact replica. So I have used basically four colors for this painting, uh, titanium white, naphthol red, ultramarine blue, and I will add in some burnt umber. I've just mixed the naphthol red with some white and a little bit of the ultramarine blue to get this nice pink color that I'm going to test out first on a couple of petals. I like to test out a couple of the colors, well all of the colors, on one part of the painting because acrylic always dries a bit darker and once it's dry you can kind of see if you, there's a shade you want to add, you want to make it darker or lighter. So it's always good to do just a little bit of a test on one side of the painting. Good thing about acrylic is it dries really fast and if you don't like anything you can always change it by painting over it. So I'm just going to test all the light and dark shades that I'm going to be using. Wait for them to dry, see how they look. I finally figured out how to get that picture reference picture into the video. So I hope this makes it a bit easier and you can always pause and stop the video wherever you need to to get a better look at the photograph and also to kind of go back and see if you need to repeat anything. So I've just added some of the burnt umber and I'm adding it to that pink color that I made. And this is going to be used for all the parts of the petals that are in shade, going into the flower or being overlapped by another petal. So all those darker areas. I always take out just a tiny bit of paint because acrylic dries really fast. If you take out too much it just gets dry and you end up not being able to use it, wastes a lot of paint. Just take out a little bit at a time. Test your colors. So I've got that darker shade and I'm just going to start adding that. some more and adding it to that pink, making it a little bit darker to get this petal over here, which is slightly darker than the one beside it. 
it helps distinguish all those different petals as well if you're gonna color them differently. Otherwise it looks like starts to look like one big blob. So this one is gonna have to be even darker. This one goes right into the middle of the flower, the center of the flower. You can see it going in in the in the photograph. still some of that light paint in the paintbrush before I added that darker color to it and I'm just going to get rid of that all over here so that I don't waste it. And also to help fill in this area. And it's still a bit light. I'm going to have to make it a bit darker because this part goes right into that into the flower and it's got quite a bit of shadow on it. Rinsing out the paintbrush and wiping it off to get rid of all that extra paint. Especially when you're changing colors, and sometimes even when you're not, there gets to be a lot of paint on your brush, and you need to get rid of it so that you can go in and do detailed work and have finer lines. Otherwise, you end up with really sloppy work. I'm just going to go in, fill in this petal while I wait for the others to dry so I can figure out if I want to add some more red or some more white or if it looks good the way it is. Just have to wait for it to dry. This part of the painting, just filling in these colors, I used my flat round tipped brush. Or sorry, not round tipped, it's not. It's flat and it's just rounded at the edge. It's not a fine point. Just adding some more highlights. I just added a little bit of white to that pink color that I already had. What you should do when you're painting is just look at that one little portion that you're painting at a time. It gets very overwhelming to look at the whole photograph and it gets very confusing. So whatever you're painting, just look at that one little bit of your reference photograph and just concentrate on that one small part that you're painting. blending in some more pink here because that part of the petal got really dark. And 
and again for the first few petals I just kind of figure out I'm just figuring out which colors go where if I need to add um, more red or more blue and once that dries then I will adjust the color and then go ahead and fill in the rest of the petals you're just adding a bit of that highlight. I add in a bit of the highlights along with the base color just to keep track of those different shapes in the petals. I'm just going to speed the video up here. I'm just going to go in and fill in the rest of the flower with that pink color that I had made. And now that it's dry, and I know that this is the color I want, I'm just going to go in and mix a whole bunch of it. Just enough to cover the flower. So I've got white in the naphthol red, and I'm going to take a little bit of ultramarine blue and add that. And it's dry. I'm trying to scrape that up, but done. I'm just going to grab the tube. And this was Liquitex Heavy Body. These are all just leftover paints I've been using. You can use any paint that you have. I usually use Amsterdam acrylics, but I want to use up all this extra paint that I had. So that it's not wasted. So just adding a tiny bit of the ultramarine blue, uh, ultramarine blue to that pink. And this is the color I'm going to use to fill in all of the flower and then I'm going to go in afterwards with the darker shade and the highlights. Just going to go and fill in all these shapes and I am going to leave those little lines between the different shapes so that I don't lose track of where the petal starts, where it ends, where it's curving in, where it's curving out. So you will see those black outlines and I'm just going to go and fill those in afterwards while I'm painting all the details on the petals. This is just an easy way to keep track of the different shapes and the different petals so that it doesn't start to just look like one big mass of pink. And as you can see, it's not an exact replica of the reference photo, which is fine. I wasn't really aiming for photorealism. I just wanted to paint this flower. It was gorgeous and it was apparently after a rainstorm and it looks so pretty with those raindrops on it. Just adding some more naphthol red and I'm going to make that shadow color, add 
in some burnt umber. And that was also just a tube of Windsor Newton, so I'm just using whatever paint I have. I'm not particularly fond of any one brand. I do like the Amsterdam acrylics better than anything else, and I just didn't want to waste these. There are some tubes I've had left over from different projects. Adding some burnt umber and some ultramarine blue to the naphthol red to make that darker tone that will go in all the shaded parts of the flower where the flower is disappearing into the, the petals are disappearing into the center of the flower. That will be the darkest parts and of course where there's some shade on the petals from the other petals or because they aren't catching the light directly so they'll be slightly darker trying to scrape up this white which has also dried and I have to take out some more this is why I take out only a little bit at a time and I always keep a spray bottle handy to, to spray my paint, otherwise it gets dry really fast. I like the Amsterdam acrylics because they are, they don't dry as fast as um, the heavy body, the Liquitex and the Winsor Newton ones. palette isn't the best for mixing with a palette knife. I had this really nice ceramic one that had flat little sections in it and someone used it and either misplaced it or broke it. I haven't seen it for about a year now so I'm guessing that was the end of it. Okay, so the shadow, that area in the shade that I painted was a bit too brown. I wanted to make it a bit more vibrant, which is why I added a bit more naphthol red to this dark color. And I'm just going to go in and add that to all the petals that, all the areas of the petals that are in shadow. And where I want to show a really dark area, I'm going to add just a little bit of burnt umber in with that dark color I've just mixed, as you can see. So if you're doing it while it's wet, then it's much easier to blend. And if you wait till it's dry, you have to kind of scuffle it in. You do have to rinse out your paintbrush a couple times. When you've got too much paint, you get too much paint loaded onto the paintbrush and you get, can't get those fine lines. It's a good idea to rinse it out and get some fresh paint. So this is the medium size round tip brush. I had filled in the color with the main color with the filbert. It's a flat brush with a rounded edge. And when you want to do more detail work and have finer lines, of course, it's, you use a round tip paintbrush. I'm just going to fill in all those dark areas. And where I want to show the really dark areas that are going into the flower or that are covered by 
a petal on top. I'm just going to add some brown right in the corners, right on the edges. There you can see I'm adding some dark brown, some burnt umber with the red. Or not red, actually, sorry, dark pink. I did lose track of some of the petals and put in a couple of extra petals and took out some. So you can see that what I'm painting is not exactly the same as the photograph. Which is fine, you just want to get the main idea. The main shapes, the details, the texture, where the light is hitting where the shadows are. And as you can see, I've start, started covering up some of those dark black lines that you can see in the around the flower and some of them are left because that's where the highlights are going to go in. So this is the titanium white. Just going to take some of that out and add it to that dark shadow color I have. And I'm going to start in with the highlights then. Just going to mix a bit of it in the corner so that I still have that dark sh shade left. So I want to go back and fix things up. You can see how thick it's gotten because it dries so fast. Always keep a spray, little spray bottle handy and spray your paint once in a while so that it doesn't get too dry. I'm going to mix a little bit of this middle color here so I've got that nice dark pink which is in the all the shadow areas and this mid pink and then the lighter one for the highlight. And you want to have like all three of them ready because it's better to blend all those colors in while they're still wet and you might need a couple paint brushes so just taking those lighter shades and adding them in to where the highlighted parts of the petals are. And of course you've got I've got that middle color there as well and it just makes it easier to have those all three of the colors ready so that you can blend them in. So you've got your highlights that mid-tone and then the darker color. I'm just gonna add the edges of this petal here. I thought it doesn't look like that big huge red blob that it looks like at the moment. If you look in the reference photo you can see just a hint of that highlighted edge differentiating the two petals. And I've got my thin round tip brush now. 
I'm gonna go in for those smaller details, the finer details. seem to have some cat hair in my brushes. This is what happens when you have three cats and two of them like to hang out with you all the time when you're painting. So I'm just adding in some of those fine lines on the petals. The more details you add, the more realistic it starts to look. I really love adding in fine details, I find it so therapeutic. So you can't really see a lot of detail in the photograph in this part of the flower because it's a bit blurred, but I'm going in and I didn't really want that blurred effect. I wanted the whole thing to be very focused and all the details visible, so I'm just going in and adding them myself. see this petal just a little bit, just a hint of the edge of this petal peeking out from the middle of this flower and then disappearing into the center of it. And I'm just going to go in and add all those highlights as you can see that black line is going to be covered over now. Taking a bit more white for those parts of the flower that are much brighter, where it has brighter highlights. Bring a little more white to that pink, bring these fine lines and all that texture on this petal that's curling outwards. Here I'm adding that middle, that mid-tone that I had and pulling it into that darker color. Adding a bit of shadow behind that petal that's curling outward and a bit on this side. Where the light isn't hitting. So you just have to kind of look at your photograph and take hints from it to know where to add the highlights and the shadows and the midtone. And that's basically all I did. Just looked at one little part at a time. Filled in that one part that I was looking at. Otherwise it does get overwhelming when you look at the whole picture. It does get a bit confusing. So you just look at one little part that you're painting at a time and just fill that in. Covering up 
up all those black lines that I had left. Leaving them in was really helpful. And of course you have to clean up your brush a couple times. Adding in that lip tone. Doing it in the form of fine lines that matches the texture and the little designs, the little fine lines that are on the petals in the photograph. When you look at petals really carefully, they've got all these fine lines on them and it's so delicate and so beautiful. So these are highlights on this part of the petal that is curving outwards, but also there's that dark area that's in shade and this is where I stopped looking at my reference photo and just started filling in where I, the sh because I knew the shape and the texture of the petals so I actually ended up putting an extra petal in there so it looks like three petals rather than just the two that are in the photograph which is fine Here you can see that that dark red line made it into three petals. And that is about it. Now the fun part comes with adding in these little raindrops. So you have to, I have two fine round tip brushes that I rinsed out really well, wiped them off, got all the cat fluff out of them, and I'm just taking some more ultramarine blue. And what I'm going to do is take this dark shadow color that I had, or shade color, mix it with a little bit of the blue to get this nice dark, not really dark, but this purple color, which is going to make the edges of the raindrops. So I'm not going to paint in all of the raindrops. You can go ahead and do that. I'm just going to do a couple because it's actually been almost three hours since I've been painting now and I'm about, my neck is about done. So I'm just going to add a couple so you can see how it's done and you can add more or less it's really up to you it doesn't have to be exactly like the photograph so I've got that outline that I made with the purple and what you want to do in the middle of that raindrop is add in a slightly lighter shade of pink than the petal is This is about almost the same color, I have to lighten that a bit. It's easier just to fill it with a light color, lighter color first and then add the little shadows in because if you look at the drop, even the drop has little shadows inside it where it's picking up the darker pink color reflecting the light 
So I'm just going to go in now and add that little bit of darker pink so that the center part, which is catching the light, is highlighted with light pink. I'm going to take some titanium white. I just need some fresh because most of it is mixed with the pink just for that highlight that needs to be really bright where that light is catching on that one little part of the drop. Drops are really fun to paint and they're just it's just kind of therapeutic painting them. So I'm going to go in for another drop and you can see it's not in the exact spot that it is in the photograph. I'm just using the photograph to get an idea of where the drop is picking up the, that light, where it's throwing a bit of shadow. The drop itself throws a bit of a shadow on the edges. which is what you're going to do with that purple color. And again, I'm just highlighting it with the lighter pink. And then taking that pure white and adding just a little, tiny little highlight. To make that raindrop stand out. And I am using two brushes so that I don't have to keep wiping it off. One for the darker color and one for the lighter colors. So again, I'm just going to put one, use that darker color to put one little drop on the edge of the petal here. A little bit of shadow on this side. lighter pink also a bit of that darker pink near the shadow of the drop and just a tiny dot of white where it's highlighted where the light is Falling. So if you look at the raindrops in the photograph, you can see that it's got about three to four different shades in there. It's got that darker outline and shadow color. Even the raindrop has its own little bit of shadow. And you want to put that in because it starts to look really 3D. And you've got that mid-tone, which is most of the raindrop color, and then a little bit of a lighter pink and a tiny speck of white. And this drop is hanging kind of so it's and it's because it's under the petal. It's a bit darker than the other ones. You can see more darkness in there. And this one that I'm working on right now of course is just lying on top of the petal. And you can go in and add these drops in the exact same way, as many as you like. I'm just going to add one here. And I think one more. So again, you can see I just took that purple color that I had mixed. the outline and the little bit of shadow that's cast by the drop. I'm going to take that pink and this is a little bit lighter because it's catching the light 
but it's on a darker part of the petal. That's part that's in shadow. But once the light hits it, that little part is illuminated a bit more than the rest of the petal. And of course that tiny highlight in there where the light is catching. And if you look at the drops carefully, you can see where the color is showing out from underneath and where the highlights are, where the light is reflecting. And just go ahead and add as many drops as you like. I'm done with this one for now. I might go in and add some more drops later if my neck lets me. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully next week there will be a different tutorial. Please do leave me a comment or a suggestion about what you want to paint and I will find a nice photograph and we can paint it.